In this video, we're going to focus on vertical motion, but as it relates to calculus. You could apply this to typical physics problems as well. Now, one of the first things you need to be familiar with is the position function, represented by the symbol s, the velocity function, and the acceleration function. In order to go in this direction, you need to take the derivative. So for instance, the derivative of the position function will give you the velocity function. And the derivative of the velocity function will give you the acceleration function. Now, if you want to go in the opposite direction, you need to integrate. The integral of the acceleration function will give you the velocity function plus the constant of integration, the constant c. Likewise, the integral of the velocity function, the integral of vt dt, is going to give you the position function with the constant c, which you have to figure out. Now, in order to solve this problem, we need to be familiar with the general form of the position function. It's equal to the initial position plus the initial velocity multiplied by time plus one half at squared, where a is the acceleration. In physics, you'll see this formula like this. y final is equal to y initial plus v initial t plus one half at squared. But it's basically the same thing. Now, in calculus, sometimes you'll get this function, but you may see two different things. Sometimes you'll see 4.9 t squared. Other times you'll see 16 t squared. When you see this, this has to do with the units of acceleration. Now, on Earth, the acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared. In order to convert meters to feet, you need to multiply meters by 3.28. So if you take 9.8, multiply it by 3.28, you'll get 32.1. I mean, the more exact answer might be like 32.2, but we'll say approximately 32. So this is approximately 32 feet per second squared. So when you plug this number into this part of the formula, 1 half of 9.8, you're going to get 4.9 t squared. If you were to plug in 32 feet per second into this equation, half of that you'll get 16. So whenever you see this variant of the equation, what you need to know is that the time is going to be in seconds, the position is in meters. If you see 16 t squared, then you know that the position is in feet. So if you're dealing with this equation, position is in feet, velocity will be feet per second, acceleration is feet per second squared. If you're dealing with this variant of the equation, position will be in meters, velocity will be in meters per second, acceleration will be meters per second squared. So just be mindful of that. But now let's go ahead and work on this problem. A rock is dropped from the top of a building that is 1,500 feet tall. Determine the position and velocity functions of the rock. So let's draw a picture. Let's say this is the building. And here is, say we got a person here. And he drops a rock and it's going to fall down. Now, in order to determine the position function, all we need to do is replace, we'll figure out what the initial height is. That's going to be the height of the building. So we got to replace S initial with 1500. Now, notice that the rock, it wasn't thrown downward. It wasn't thrown upward. It was simply released from rest. In this case, the initial velocity in the y direction will be zero. Now, what about the acceleration in the y direction? The acceleration in the y direction, now, keep in mind, we're dealing with feet. 
So we want the acceleration in feet per second squared, not meters per second squared. So we're going to use 32 feet per second squared and not 9.8 meters per second squared. Now gravity brings things down. So the acceleration in the y direction is not going to be positive, but it's a negative 32 feet per second squared. So therefore, our position function, which I'll leave it over here, is 1500 minus 16 t squared. So that's the first part for answer choice A. Now we also need to determine the velocity function as well. In order to do that, we need to take the derivative of the position function. The derivative of a constant is 0, so 1500 disappears. And the derivative of t squared is 2t, so we get negative 32t. So that is the velocity function that describes the velocity of the rock at any time t as it falls. Now, part B, determine the instantaneous velocity at t equal 3 seconds. So this is going to be negative 32 times 3, which is negative 96, and the units will be feet per second. So that's it for part B. Now, part C, calculate the average velocity on the interval 2 to 4. To calculate the average velocity, we need to take the change in position, SB minus SA, divided by the change in time, so TB minus TA, given the interval A to B. So the average velocity is going to be, in this case, A is 2, B is 4. Looking at this information here. So it's going to be S of 4 minus S of 2 over 4 minus 2. So we need to plug in 4 into the position function. So it's going to be 1500 minus 16 times 4 squared. And then S of 2, that's going to be 1500 minus 16 times 2 squared, all over 2. Now, 1,500 minus 1,500, they're going to cancel. 4 squared is 16 times negative 16. That's going to be negative 256. And here we have two negatives, so that's going to become a positive. 2 squared is 4 times 16. That's going to be 64, all divided by 2. Negative 256 plus 64 is negative 192 divided by 2. This will give us the same answer, negative 96 feet per second. So in this particular problem, the instantaneous velocity at t equals 3 is equal to the average velocity on the interval from 2 to 4. And it makes sense because 3 is right between 2 and 4. Now, it doesn't always work that way, but for this problem, it did. Part D. How long will it take before it hits the ground? So we need to calculate time. Keyword or key expression, how long? Now, what is the height of the rock when it hits the ground? The height is going to be 0. So this part, S of t, is 0. What we're going to do is we're going to replace S of t with 0, and we're going to solve for t. So I'm going to add 16t squared to both sides, which will move it to the left side, giving me this. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 16. 1,500 divided by 16 is 93.75. When you take the square root of that, 
you're going to get the, the time it takes to hit the ground, which is 9.68246 seconds. Part E, how fast is it moving before it hits the ground? So we can use the velocity function, plugging in the time that we just got. Therefore, it's going to be negative 32 times 9.68246. So this equates to negative 309.8 feet per second. Now, we need to be careful because the question for part E asks how fast is it moving? So does it want the speed or the velocity? What would you say? When you hear the phrase how fast, we're talking about speed. Unless it says velocity, we're assuming speed. This right here, because it has a negative sign, that is the velocity of the rock just before impact. If we want to find speed, we need to make it positive. Speed is the absolute value of velocity. Speed is always positive. So it's this is how fast it's moving. Positive 309.8 feet per second. That's the speed. That's the answer for part E. Now part F. What is the height of the rock five seconds after it was dropped? To calculate the height we could use the S of T function. But we want to find the position five seconds later. So it's going to be 1500 minus 16 times 5 squared. 5 squared is 25 times 16, that's 400. So this is 1500 minus 400, which will give us 1100. So it's 1100 feet above the ground. That's the height of the rock five seconds after it was dropped. Now, when will the ball be 100 feet above the ground? So this time, we're replacing S of T with 100. So it's going to be 100 is equal to 1500 minus 16 T squared. If we subtract both sides by 1500, 100 minus 1500 is negative 1400. So we get this. And then we could divide both sides by negative 16. So we get t squared is negative 1400 divided by negative 16, which is 87.5. Finally, we could take the square root of both sides. And this is going to give us 9.35 seconds. So at this time, at 9.35 seconds, it's going to be 100 feet above the ground. But in 9.68 seconds, it's going to hit the ground. So that's basically it for this video. Hopefully it gave you a nice introduction into vertical motion problems as it relates to calculus. By the way, for those of you who want more problems on these types of questions, whether it's physics or calculus, check out the links in the description section below. I'll be posting more content there, so for those of you who want more problems to work on, you, you could do that.